This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is both a greeting and an affirmation. And it was first proclaimed on the very first Easter morning. Many churches say it three times to remind the faithful of the ways God still speaks to us. Through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Throughout the world, in every language, the meaning is the same. And we in Bar Harbor and Trenton and Ellsworth, Maine and New York, Florida and Texas, in New Jersey, California, Pennsylvania, Montana, Georgia, and Wisconsin. And if we miss your state, remind us in the chat. We greet each other with that Easter message passed from one Christian to another through ages and ages. Rod will start and you answer with me three times. The Lord has risen. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. It has been a difficult and challenging year for all of us. But today is Easter. Rejoice. Rejoice. Let's join together in our intro. Halle, halle, halle. to this service, this celebration of God's great goodness this Easter Sunday. If you've got something you need to celebrate, an anniversary, uh, something else, a birthday, go ahead and put it in our chat. We'll share it and celebrate it along with you. I know that nikisha has got a birthday today. Tiffany's got a birthday tomorrow. Hannah parody has got a birthday on Tuesday. And Nick Ruse has got a birthday on Thursday. I'm sure there are others we can celebrate. Chat it in and Christy will let me know. That's awesome. You can also use the chat function on Zoom to share your prayers when we come to that portion of our service. It's a communion Sunday, so gather stuff together. Open table happens this Tuesday, meals by takeout or delivery. We've got morning prayer on Facebook Live, Tuesday morning at 8.30. Evening prayer, Thursdays at seven o'clock, also by Facebook Live. We've got a saunter about town on Thursdays at 10 o'clock and our Zoom Bible study meets on Fridays. You can pick up your Easter flowers, these beautiful flowers, um, tomorrow or Tuesday uh, during the office hours, probably in the morning is best. Welcome. Happy Easter. Christy, anything more we should celebrate? There is a lot to celebrate. So when, when, if you see anything, you let me know. Awesome. Good. We'll begin our service. We'll continue our service lighting the candle of God. Beloved, we gather together in the love, grace, and joy of God. Amen. Will you join me in our call to worship? On this mountain, the Lord will make for all peoples a feast of abundance and joy. God will destroy the shroud that is cast over all peoples. God will swallow up death forever. God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of the people God will take away from all the earth. It will be said on this day, this is the one for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in God's redemption. Our hymn is Christ the Lord is risen today.
Let us pray. Easter in God, who calls us beloved, you reach out your hands and lead us from despair to joy. And we dance in your loving embrace. You breathe peace into our souls that we might bring healing and encouragement to a weary world. Today, we celebrate the gift of Easter, knowing that darkness cannot extinguish light and that love is more powerful than death. Strengthen us to go wherever your spirit leads, that we may be ambassadors of grace, children of hope, and messengers of love. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. So I'm going to show you a picture. That's a kind of messy room, isn't it? You notice the bed isn't made, right? You notice the bed isn't made, and, and you notice that somebody was probably in a hurry. There's stuff all over the room, and maybe they were running late for school. This is not anyone I know. Let me just say that as a disclaimer. They're running late for school and had to throw everything off and rush out the door and maybe grab a, a banana on the way out or something. That was done in, that, something like that, you can see, is done in great haste. And the bed is not made. Let me show you something else. In the Easter story that we see in the Gospel of John, it, you'll hear these details about what happened. And one of the details you'll hear is that when the disciples go into the tomb where they thought Jesus would be, where his body would be, they find it empty. And one of the things they see are the linen, the cloths that had been wrapped around Jesus' body, neatly folded in the place where he lay. And the part with, that wrapped around his head and the part that wrapped around his body were neatly folded but kept separately. I've always heard it said that if you make your bed in the morning, you'll continue with the rest of your day with that same careful attention to detail. That it's not that same rush and flurry, running out the door at the last minute, feeling anxious and worried and maybe a bit behind even as the day starts. But if you make your bed or fold the linens, you're doing something with purpose. You're doing it with intention. That's what God did on Easter. This wasn't the work of people robbing Jesus' tomb, as some of his disciples thought. It wasn't somebody rushing in and rushing out, but something deliberate and purposeful, and taking time to leave behind signs that hinted at what had happened. Not something rushed, but something done on purpose. These folded linens, this detail in the Gospel of John, remind us, God did this, raising Jesus from the dead, bringing him to life so that we all might have life. Not in a rush and a flurry, but with care and with love. When you hear that part of today's story, remember, this is not an accident. This is God. Let us pray. Love and grace, you bring us the gift and joy of Easter. And we give you thanks, our hearts open in gratitude and joy. In your name we pray. Amen.
As we continue together in a time of prayer, I invite you to share your prayers by way of our chat on Facebook, on Facebook, on Zoom, whatever social media platform we're using. A couple of celebrations. Nick Cruz turns 15 this week, and I am so glad Cadian had a baby born this week. Congratulations, Cadian and Mike. We look forward to celebrating this gift and joy with you. We lift up names that we've lifted up previously, holding them in our love and prayer. We pray for Ada and Carl, Lee and Anne, Kathy and Sue, Josephine and Rusty, Judy, Gertrude, Darlene and Levi, Luzvi and Doug, Les and Ginny, Nat and Dick, Ed and Wendy, Ruth and Karen, Aline and Andrea, Bob and Ben, Kimberly and Carrie. We pray for Joy and Lois, Cindy and Max, Cameron and Sydney, Blake and Elaine, May and Linda, Raymond and Jonathan, Connie and Colleen, Gerard and Dan, Sandra and Alex, Natasha and Marilyn, Sally and Roberta, and Connor. Today, we acknowledge the 53rd anniversary of Martin Luther King's death. We pray for our friends in Haiti and the community life centers of Haiti. We pray for those who have died this past year from COVID or other causes, and for those who are not, who are not able to console or grieve. We seek God's comforting spirit for all who have suffered losses recently, for the families and communities of Barbara Rappaport, Sue Ann Sargent, Mary Ellen Kimball, Walter Seward, Wayne Beckford and Cassandra Caceres, Lonnie Nighy, Billy Evans, Helen Douglas, Greggy. We pray for the communities of Atlanta, Boulder, Virginia Beach, Wilmington, and Capitol Hill. We continue together in the spirit of prayer. Dawn of Easter, spark of hope, light of promise. Our hearts sing your praise this glorious morning. Your love bursts open the tomb of despair to breathe new life and proclaim victory over all that would mute our joy. Alleluia. Risen Lord, hear our cry of thanksgiving for your stubborn grace and faithful loving kindness, for your companionship through deep valleys and your abiding presence, for your angels of mercy and compassion who lift our eyes toward hope, our spirits toward joy, and our bodies toward wholeness. Risen Lord, hear our cry for communities of faith, that we extend your extravagant welcome even across distance, that we anticipate a future side by side, hand in hand, that we discern purpose beyond ourselves, that we nurture the dignity of neighbors and the integrity of creation, that we courageously respond to your call our ways formed by your way, our lives shaped by your life, our love modeled after your love. Risen Lord, hear our cries for help, for those caught in the shadow of grief, for those hemmed in by illness, whether visible or veiled, for those walking the road of recovery, for those weighed down with worry, for those overwhelmed by isolation, for those who are weary. Pour out your spirit of consolation and strength, encouragement and healing. 
Risen Lord, hear our pleas for justice, for our nation and all nations, for vulnerable and exploited people, for those facing devastation, whether from natural or human causes, for those enduring violence or racism, for those suffering because of others' greed, for your beautiful and precious creation. Help and guide us to live, love, and serve as you would have us to, co-creators with you of your kingdom of blessing for all. Open our hearts to your spirit until your glory is revealed in relentless love, in communities transformed by justice and compassion, and in the making whole all that is torn asunder. We rest in your embrace, offering the prayers of our hearts, whether in silence or out loud, or by way of our chat. We lift our hearts to you, O oh God. We pray for Andrea Garish and her family. We lift up prayers for Lee and Janet. Pray for Jonathan Walsh, who will be deployed to Afghanistan. We pray for the family of Mike Wood, Megan, Tia, and Nancy. Faith, hope, Love abide, these three, and the greatest is love. Love surrounds and sustains us. Love calls us from the tomb of despair into the hope of Easter. To your love, O God, we entrust all for whom we pray, and our prayers both spoken and unspoken. Together we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let us sing our response. The Easter reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Peter came following him, and went into the tomb. 
He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to him, them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. I invite you to lift, join me in lifting up prayers for all who are in nursing homes who can't be with their families. Prayers for Liz who tested positive for COVID. Prayers of gratitude for vaccination workers and educators. Amen. Let me first this morning take a moment to express my deep gratitude for all who have participated in and produced our worship services this past year. Sometimes people say liturgy is the work of the people and at no time has this been more true than now. Let me say thank you for your selfless graced offering of time and talents so that we might be able to gather together in worship and prayer. All of this has been more difficult and more protracted than we anticipated. And your energy, your effort, and devotion means so much to me, to our congregation, both near and far, and to our community. Thank you. Let me also say that this year, many of us will find empty chairs around our Easter tables, our joy dimmed by profound loss. I hope and pray that Easter bring moments of fond recollection and even gratitude and that God's consoling embrace and the promise of reunion will lighten your hearts and lift your spirits. Let us pray. O oh, gracious love whom the tomb could not contain, we give you thanks this Easter morning. Open our hearts and our lives to your presence. Lift our eyes from shadow to dawn. In your name we pray. Amen. With their hats, glasses, and masks on, it's often been hard for me to recognize even my closest friends. And then, with a word, hello. Or they're saying my name. I hear their voice, and I know at once who they are. 
Suddenly the weight of separation, the months of Zoom trivia or socially distanced walks, the weight lifts and there we are together again. And I experience both reunion and joy. In the Gospel of John, the story of Easter unfolds through the eyes of Mary and Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, intimate glimpses into the transformation of their lives, from anxiety and fear to reunion and joy. At first, they're overwhelmed by grief, paralyzed by fear of the Roman authorities and anxious for what will happen next, even to them. The scriptures tell us that early in the morning, Mary runs to the tomb and finds it empty. She tells the others who come too and see it as she said. They only knew that Jesus' body wasn't there. But where was it? They see the linen wrappings neatly folded. They return, puzzled and afraid. The focus narrows to Mary who peers into the tomb and sees two angels who ask, why are you weeping? She reveals her fears. They have taken my Lord and I don't know where. Suddenly Jesus appears, but Mary doesn't recognize him, perhaps a gardener. And then with a word, Mary, she knows. The mask of grief and worry lifts from her eyes. Reunion, joy. The gift of Easter is this intimate reunion, this movement to joy. And it's also the reforming of community and the renewal of purpose. John paints a picture of a fragmented band of disciples. Mary goes alone to the tomb, the other disciples hide in fear. Later, they're locked together in a room. Almost as soon as Mary absorbs this amazing news, Jesus gives her a job. Go and tell the others. There's more to come. Through Mary's witness, Easter begins God's work of weaving back together the frayed tapestry of God's promised kingdom of shalom, whose warp is fellowship, whose weft is service putting the band back together, as it were. Mary takes the good news of resurrection and tosses it like a mighty rock into a small pond, creating a wave of transformation whose ripples we still feel today. We see the dawn of Easter, not just for my own life, the promise of hope, the promise and hope of reunion, not just for me, but for all of us who are called beloved and conscripted for God's purposes of relentless transforming love. These days, as we begin to glimpse and feel the joy of reunion with vaccines becoming more prevalent, we cherish anew those whom we long to embrace. We remember that God is at work setting things right. We remember that Easter just isn't about me but about the blessing and flourishing of God's beloved. That the abundant life Jesus promises is not only about me or mine, but also about what we can all do and share together. Today, some will gather safely at home with loved ones to share a feast. And some, for some, it will be the first time in a very long time. Today, we also gather gathered in this strange and yet now familiar way. And we also celebrate a feast, the feast of resurrection, the nourishing feast of God's calling us beloved and sending us out to spread this love with others. And so as we share this feast, our weary hearts rise to the hope of new life. As we celebrate the joy of resurrection and the presence of God in our midst, and as we anticipate the promise of God's kingdom still to come, we proclaim Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia and amen.
The Christ is risen and we rise to new life with him. Let us take a moment to acknowledge the ways we continue to remain inside our tombs of brokenness and shadow. Together, let us pray. Living Lord, the empty tomb invites us into the joy of new life, but we can still fear fear, doubt, mistrust, and emptiness. Dispel the fear that paralyzes us at the brink of new life. Dispel our doubt of your love. Dispel our mistrust of your disarming grace. Fill our emptiness with your glorious light. Raise our hearts to resurrection joy and our spirits to new life for the glory of your name. Amen. Christ calls us from shadow to light, from despair to hope, from estrangement to community. Beloved, the stone is rolled away. We rise with Christ. And with that reunion and joy, let us share a sign of God's peace and love and joy with one another. I invite you to unmute and move to the what they call the gallery or the Brady Bunch of fellowship. Grace and peace and joy. As we come to our time of the feast of joy and grace of, re of resurrection. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to get something to eat and to drink that we might share and partake together. May the Lord be with you all. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God.
On the night he was betrayed, Jesus sat among friends and he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given to you. As often as you do this, remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he gave it to them saying, this is the cup of the new covenant my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you do this, remember me. Let us pray. God of new life, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and cup, that they may become for us heaven's food and drink, healing, forgiving, making us whole, and that we may become your body, loving and caring in the world until your kingdom comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome to this feast of grace. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The cup of Christ for our reconciliation. Let us pray. Bountiful God, we give thanks that you have refreshed us at your table with the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Have you ever felt despair, felt your happiness taken from you in one agonizing day? On the morning I went to the tomb, I was sad and even angry. What was his crime? You tell me, what was his crime? That morning it was still dark, but I had to go. Even though I knew there might be guards, there might be trouble, I had to go. It was still and dark and quiet. I was listening for signs of danger. So I crept near and waited until I could see the tomb and the, you know, a big stone that covered it. As light slowly filtered in, I couldn't believe my eyes. The stone was rolled away. The grave was open, a big black hole into the rock. I took off. I needed to get help. I ran at first, then slowed myself so my excitement wouldn't reveal our hiding place. I had to tell them what I saw. Waiting for Mary to return was agony. Had she been arrested? Should we have gone with her? At last, she came in quietly and then burst out with the news. They have taken the Lord from the tomb, she cried. 
and I do not know where they have taken him. What? We wanted to hear it again. We needed to know more details. But she knew nothing more. He was missing from the tomb. We had to go and see for ourselves. I was not going to fail him again. Not again. John and I, we left right away. We ran side by side. I got there first, and I can only share the truth of what I saw. The stone was rolled away. The carefully wrapped body was gone. Only the linens remained. I was stunned. Just trying to make some sense of what I was seeing. When I saw the amazement on John's face, I pushed past him and entered the tomb. It Jesus was not there. Just the linen wrapping, folded up neatly, and the cloth so lovingly placed on his face, lying where Jesus had been. John came in behind me, and suddenly I knew what Jesus had been telling us all those times. All of that time, I knew the scriptures have been fulfilled. Jesus is risen from the dead. Jesus was alive. So next I followed Peter and John and saw them go in the tomb. Saw them come out, changed, like they were illumined or something. They rushed off together, but I, I couldn't leave. I crept to the open tomb and stood where John had stood. And I just... I broke down. Jesus wasn't there. I, I had never felt so alone. So next, there was a blinding light. I saw an angel sitting where Jesus's head would have been. And another angel, I'm not kidding, it was an angel, was where his feet had rested. They were dressed in purest white, bright lights. It was unbelievable. Why are you weeping? Who is it you're looking for? They asked me. Well, you know, my love for Jesus just completely overcame any fear of these crazy looking angels in front of me. And I told them that someone had taken Jesus away and I needed to know where they had put him. I felt a presence behind me next and I turned as someone asked, why are you weeping? I thought it was the gardener and I begged him to tell me where Jesus was. Mary. That's all it took. Just hearing him call my name. I knew him. And I knew this. The Lord was risen. He asked me to tell the disciples. So, here's my testimony. I, Mary of Magdala, in the grace of God, got to knock on the locked doors and greet Peter and John and the others, gathered and gave them the good news. I have seen the Lord. I wasn't there when Mary came bursting in, claiming she'd spoken with Ravuni, even brought us a message from him. Really? I don't doubt Mary thinks she saw him. We've all been under a terrible strain, especially his mother and the Marys. But I hate to say, it's just too good to be true. They crucified him. Crucified him. He was dead. I wouldn't believe it unless I saw it for myself, and I told him so. And then I saw it for myself. We were all together trying to decide what to do next. The doors were locked, bolted, and locked. And he came in. Know this. Nothing can keep him out. He called me over and invited me to touch those damaged hands, to press his wounded side. I felt guilt. At the same time, I felt forgiven, redeemed, even loved. And so it can be for you too. The Lord is risen. 
There were indeed many other signs that Jesus performed in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. These are written in order that you may hold faith that Jesus is the Christ, and that through this faith you may possess life by his name. Let's lift our hearts and our voices together in song. Let us talents and tongues employ. loves us, let us love one another deeply from the heart. Break the bread of new life wherever the world is still in pain. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine. Uh. 